One of the most unique things about gdevelop is the ever-growing list of extensions that you can install. These extensions let you do very complex things in just a few clicks. The magic behind this is that extensions use the exact same events, conditions, and actions that you use to build normal gdevelop games, which means that anybody who can create a gdevelop game can also create a gdevelop extension. This video will show you how to do that. Let's look at some very simple extensions to give you an example of how these work. As you know, you install extensions here, search for new extensions, type in what you're interested in looking at, and it'll install. Once an extension is installed, it'll be here on the left. And what you may not know is that you actually have the source code to each of these just by clicking on them. Now you're inside the extension editor interface. This extension is Y sort. It creates an illusion of depth by setting the Z order based on the Y position of the object. This is a behavior that you assign to an object. So if you click on behaviors, you look over here, there's only one function, the do step pre events. So this is an automatic lifestyle function that runs every frame before the user's events take place. Let's click on this to see what's inside this function a single event. Uh, when I saw this I was surprised but it makes sense now. This event has no conditions so it runs every frame and it changes the Z order of this object to the Y value of the object. The Y is a position in the vertical direction. So but where does this object come from? Well this is the one thing that's different about extensions compared to normal gdevelop. In normal gdevelop events you this object is referenced to your objects in the game. Well, extensions don't know about what's in your game yet. gdevelop knows this object when you add the behavior to it. Let's do that real fast. We'll throw down three different objects. There we go. That looks nice. So, as you can see, the Z order of these objects was based off the order I placed them. The bottom one is that brick, then the head, and then the nose. Let's add the Y sort behavior. Because it's installed, it will be available. And this one doesn't have any configuration options. You just apply it. Now I'm going to apply it to all three of these. Okay. Now we have the Y sort on all three of these. Um, I'm going to add, just to make, for, to make it easier to see what's happening, I'm also going to add draggable so we can move them around for demonstration purposes. Okay, let's hit play. So now the block is in front of the head. Why is that? Well, the Y sort extension changes the Z value based off of the Y. So if this is a high Y, you know, Y is zero up here. This is the zero, zero point. And so Y is increasing. And as Y increases, the Z order is increasing. And so this will be, see how this is in front of the head? Watch what happens when I pull it above it. Boom, now it's behind it. This can be useful in games to so that the objects look like they're kind of like a, a 3D effect. So that's, that's how this extension works. Very simple, right? One event, and that's just setting the Z order based off the Y. Let's look at another one. This one's fun. The random color extension. Notice how it's not down here. This means it's not a behavior that's assigned to an object. Instead, it's a function that can be used. And if you look on it, click on it, you'll find out that it's actually a string expression. Uh, it creates a totally random color. So what, ha what it does is it sets the return value to the text equivalent of this. And if you're not familiar how colors work, the colors are RGB, red, green, blue, and the values can be between 0 and 255. And the random function picks a number between 0 and the number that you list. So this will be a random number between 0 and 255, 255, and 255, and the toString function is turning those numbers into string. And this little part here, the plus, quotations, semicolon, quotation, this basically is how you concatenate or connect strings together. Because uh, colors have to have this number, 
semicolon, number, semicolon, number. Let's try using this function. Let's tint this head to a random color every time I click on it. So first we need to create a event. Left click, trigger once, and when, the, when we click on it, we're going to tint, assign a tint to this orc head. And this is where you would be typing in a color. If you, if you click on one of these, like this red one, see how the it's 200 is very high and these are low. This is a red color, so it's red, green, blue. So the red is very high. This is the format that GDevelop wants a color to be. Instead of this static color of red, we want a random color. If you type, just start typing random, GDevelop's smart enough to know that you have the random color extension installed. And because you're in a text field, a string field, it offers you this function, the create random color. And that's all you have to do. This is the name of the extension. And then these, then there's two colons, and then this is the name of the function. So let's see how this function works. Every time I click, it's going to pick a completely random color to add to the existing color. That's the way tint works. It, it doesn't replace color, it just adds on top. So everything's going to have a green tint plus the new color. So that's an extension that is just an expression. Let's look at another type. So flash layer is one I made when I was just starting out. It's very basic, but it'll taught me a lot of things. So the extension options, this will make a layer visible for a specified duration, and then it will hide it. So you can use it for temporary effects like, like a flash or a lightning flash, or just, you can, I thought maybe you could display like the word bam ac across the screen. This one's slightly more complex. This is function type is an action. So you're going to use it in the regular events on the right side, which is the actions. The parameters are like the variables or the settings that you want to apply. So here we have parameter one, I called it layer two flash. The type is layer. These are all the different types you can pick from and you give it a label. I also have a second parameter, duration. So this is how many seconds you want it to display. The words next to the parameter are what you use inside your events to reference this variable. When this flash layer function is called, this is the function here. It's going to save the get argument as string layer to flash. That basically is referencing the parameter one. And we're saving it as a scene variable. And we're doing the same thing for the other one, get argument as number duration. So this is basically just saving parameter one, parameter two as a scene variable. Then it checks if the duration is zero. If someone leaves it the default to zero, it'll just replace it with point, 0 0.1. I like to add defaults to my extensions so that if someone just says go with them and doesn't change any of the default values, it still does something approximating what the extension does. Okay, in this last event, it resets a timer called flash layer timer, and it shows the layer. This extension assumes that the layer starts out hidden and it'll show it. And then it marks the scene variable that the flash layer is in progress. The second function here is a, a lifecycle function, the on scene post events. Post means it happens after the player's events are run. This automatically runs every frame. So first it checks to see if there is a flash layer in progress. And if so, it will look up the timer, flash layer timer, and if, it's long, if it is greater than that scene variable we saved, it will hide the layer again and delete the timer. And then it'll say that the flat flash layer is no longer in progress. Let's see how this works. So we can add a text object. We'll even just do bam, size 200, bam. Make it bold, 250, let's see how that looks. Bam! By default, it's going to be on the base layer. Let's create a new layer. We'll just call the layer. Bam! I need to move this text object to the BAM layer. Now when I hide the BAM layer, when you start the game, it'll be hidden. 
Let me just get this guy back his nose. Let's just see what this looks like in an event. So when we left click, we're going to do a flash layer. So if I type in flash, it's showing me all the options that have the word flash in it. I have to choose the layer. Let's choose the BAM layer. By default, it's 0.1 seconds. Well, I wonder if this video can even capture that. Let's make it half a second to make sure the video can see the flash. Let's try this. Okay, so if I click once, bam. Click once, bam. And so that's how the flash layer extension works. Pretty basic, but I learned from it and hopefully you'll learn from it too, how lifecycle functions work and just a couple of parameters. Let's look at an extension that's still simple, but works slightly different. So this is the health extension. As you can see, it is a behavior, so it's going to be something that you need to assign to an object. Let's assign it to the head. Behaviors, we will add the health behavior. Adds actions and conditions to manage the life of the object. You can get damaged, lose health, and you can see if it's dead. These are the default values for this behavior. Let's see how this works. So we have several functions here. We'll s Before we go to the functions, let's look at the behavior properties. So this is the name description, and this right here is very critical. The reason this is important is that the actions that are available to you in the extension are based off the object type. So for instance, sprites can do scaling, change animations, while these other types, they don't know anything about animations. So if you're going to do an extension that involves animations, you have to restrict it to sprites. If you choose any object, like this one is, you will have the basic settings that all objects do. So you can change their position, create them, delete them, give them object variables. Behaviors have properties that are assigned to every object that has behavior. Think of these as like object variables that are specific to this extension and managed by the extension. You don't reference these variables directly. You'll be using these functions that the extension provides. Notice these ones are hidden. These are not parameters the user can change. They're used internally by the extension and the types of these properties can be numbers, strings, booleans. This is like a list of strings, colors, or you can even make a required behavior. This is something that's pretty new and pretty, pretty awesome. If your extension depends on another behavior, you can use this. Okay, so we looked at the properties. Now let's look at these functions. First one is hit. So this is an action. This will be on the right side of your events. So if you want to damage this object, you would use this action. This sentence is very useful. It says damage and this param zero. That is basically references the name of the parameter. So parameter zero is object. This is the object that was given this behavior. So it's going to damage the object, removing, and then this parameter two is how much damage is going to be done, the damage value. As you can see, the actual events of this extension are very easy. It checks to make sure that the damage cooldown is past the properties for the damage cooldown, or it checks if the cooldown is not being used. And what it's going to do, subtract the health, the damage that, that this action is giving. And it's going to reset the damage cooldown if you're using that, and it'll set some other properties. The is dead is a condition. So this is, will be on the left side. If you want to find out, is this object dead? This uses the param zero, which is the object. By default, the return value of the condition will be false. However, if the health is less than or equal to zero, it will say, yes, this object is dead. And so this is dead function will return true. This function is going to run every frame right before the game events. And this just resets the is just damage property to no. This is a condition is just damaged. So this may be useful in your game. If you want to know if something's been damaged, so you can maybe change the animation to a hurt animation. There is an action called heal. This is basically the opposite of damage. So this will add the, va the heal value to the object's property called health. And if there is a max health set, it will make sure that the health never goes above the max health. The set health, this is if you want to just manage the health yourself. And the last one is an expression. So this is the health of the object. This basically returns the value of the property called health. 
So you can do this anywhere that you have an expression. For instance, if you wanted to change the text to show the health of an object, you could query that number. Of course, you'd have to change it to a string for a text object. Or you can use it in all sorts of ways, depending on what you want to do. So that's the basics of how this extension works. Hopefully it's given you some insight into how extensions can be built. I highly recommend looking at some of these simple examples and maybe try modifying them or copying them in slightly different ways to do what you want to do. And eventually you'll be able to build up your skill set to be able to create new extensions. And we would love to have your extensions as part of GDevelop. We have a team of people who are creating extensions and we would always welcome new people. Come to the Discord server for GDevelop. We have a channel called Extensions. And you can ask any questions there, and we'd be glad to help you out. I hope this video was useful. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.